Hello everyone, today I thought we would cover stimulus components and more specifically the Rails nested form components. Uh, previously we covered the Cocoon gem, which is great for using uh, nested forms and getting them up uh, very quickly and, and uh, up and running. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, we sometimes prefer to spend a little bit of extra time to avoid using libraries like jQuery, which Cocoon does rely on. So today we're gonna be looking at this alternative. It's gonna be a little bit extra than the Cocoon gem, but if we click on this and we come down to the Rails nested form, we can see that uh, it just has some setup here for us to run. Now it's gonna be a little bit different because we're gonna be using a bare bones application. So we'll just come in here and we'll get started. I'm gonna do a Rails new video. I had to remove my previous uh, video project there. And then uh, once this is done, there's only really a couple things we have to add. Uh, the main one being the stimulus Rails nested form package which we'll be using the bin import map for. So to do that, we're gonna CD into our video. So to do this, we're gonna start by copying this. We're gonna do a bin slash import map pin, and we're going to pin this package right here. Same thing if you're using ES build and yarn, you just do a yarn add. Once that's done, they give you some directions here to add this to your overall application in like the index.js. I'm personally never a fan of doing this, uh, because I prefer to know where my packages are coming from. It does mean importing it multiple times, but instead of doing this, we're actually gonna scroll down a little bit. We're gonna find the extending controller section. Because the extending controller section explains to us how we can just use this in a single controller, we're then going to do a Rails G stimulus, and we're gonna call this the nested underscore form controller. So that'll generate our stimulus controller for us. We can then come into our app, our JavaScript, our controllers, and our nested form controller. We can grab this entire thing here, control A and control V to just paste it in. You'll notice the only real difference here is we got rid of the import controller from Hotwired Stimulus and we're no longer extending controller. Instead, we're importing nested form from that package and we're extending the nested form class here. We then call super.connect, which means that the nested form is probably uh, extending that controller. So we're just doing like a double extension and then we console log whatever else we'd like here. This allows you to extend it, but it also allows you to be pretty explicit about where this is being used. So we're not just throwing this into like your, your overall index. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, we can then come over to our models and in here we need to generate the same models we used in the cocoon video so that we can have a bit more of a direct comparison and it's also just easier to follow along with if we have something that's a little bit structured so we're going to do a rails g scaffold we had i believe projects and each project had a name and a description description of type text go ahead and run that we can then do a rails g scaffold for our tasks each task I think had a description of type text, a completed of type Boolean. So we had like a checkbox and then we did the project colon belongs underscore two, just like that. Let me scroll out a little bit so you can see that that's just one line there. And we can go ahead and hit enter there. Now that we have all of those, we can go ahead and do a rails db colon drop and a rails db colon migrate. Wasn't sure if we'd already done that, but that gives us the uh, appropriate migrations. We can now do a Rails S to start our server. We can come over to localhost port 3000, to get rid of the demo project here. And let's come into our config and our routes.rb and let's set the root to be the projects controller and the index action. Once that's done, we can go ahead and close this and we can close our nested form controller. We can come up here to our models and our project.rb. Now, just like in the Cocoon video, we're gonna have two lines in here. The first one says we have many tasks with dependent destroy and inverse of project. Pretty standard Rails stuff there. And then of course, because we're doing nested forms, we need to say we accept nested attributes for these tasks that we defined saying we have many here. We want to allow destroy on those. Uh, effectively, you can't destroy these without some additional setup. So you do need to allow destroy here and you need to allow the destroy parameter in your controller. And depending on which tool you use, you might also need to pass a hidden attribute that has a underscore destroy uh, parameter. So this is gonna be the underscore destroy is a special attribute that is used to mark a record for destruction. So you're gonna be passing this parameter from the front end form. And then we just say reject if all blank. 
We can then come into our controllers and our projects controller. We can scroll down to the bottom here. And then after the description, we do a comma and then we have the task attributes. Now these aren't quite correct because our task, I believe had a description and a completed Boolean, uh, but the ID is correct. And this underscore destroys that parameter we just talked about. So we're gonna go ahead and save that. Now there's one other thing we have to change in here, but we'll do that after we get the form set up. So let's come over to our app views, projects and our project form. In our project form, we're gonna come up to the model. We're gonna do a comma. This is gonna have some data. Inside of here, we're gonna have a controller, which is going to be that nested form controller we made. So JavaScript controllers nested underscore form controller. So we need to just grab the nested underscore form. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. We'll say nested, uh, actually I think it's nested dash form because God only knows. Uh, and then there's one other thing in our stimulus directions here. If we scroll up a little bit, uh, the form, wherever that was, the form down here requires a nested form wrapper selector value. Uh, and I'm just gonna copy this whole thing and we're gonna paste that right here. So that gives us the nested forms wrapper selector value section that we can use. And then we can come over here to our localhost port 3000, refresh the page. And if we click new project, we can see do what you want here. And that is the text coming from this console log right here. So after it does the super where it connects the original controller, et cetera, et cetera, it then does the console log. So that's pretty cool. Uh, now what we can do is we can add those buttons to add a task. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's come into our form. In our form, we need to effectively copy what the uh, directions have for us here. So the first thing they have is this template, which we'll take a look at. But if you're not familiar with these templates, this is effectively what Vue.js uses. Uh, I know it's blasphemy, it's, it's a Rails tutorial and he's mentioning JavaScript, everyone run for the hills. Uh, but effectively what these templates are is uh, they are like non-rendered HTML. You can think of these as a Rails partial that doesn't have the equal sign. So it's just sitting there. And then when you want to add it, you can use some JavaScript, which they're doing down here, where they clone that template and then they add the template. So they, they make a copy of the invisible thing and attach it to like this T, or they attach this TR inside the template to this T body so that you have a new row added to it. So it's like a invisible section that you can just reference later. So that's what we're doing here is we're gonna be putting a invisible section after the description or wherever you'd like to really. I'm gonna put everything after the description just so that we can say uh, start custom logic here or something, I don't know. Let me make sure I capitalize this. And then we'll come down here, we'll do another one, we'll say end custom logic or something. Just create like a fake region so it's a bit clearer what belongs to this form. So the first thing we need is this template. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this uh, and hit control B to hide the side panel. So what this template has is the data dash nested dash form dash target. So again, the nested dash form is this controller, but it's being uh, converted to kebab case for reasons that I'm never gonna understand. And then we tell it this is the template it needs to use. So this is required. It will throw an error if you don't have it. And then it just tells us that we're gonna be using these form.fields for the tasks. It then creates a new task object uh, whenever you render this. It has a child index of new record uh, just because it needs to have the child index. This is gonna look very similar to the actual uh, field form that we're gonna be creating, creating in a second here. We then render a project slash project underscore task underscore form partial, and we pass in a form, which is this task fields form. So we just pass that in. So this, this is fine and good, but it really makes no sense if you're just looking at it. So let's take a look at what the actual form looks like. So because we're using a nested attributes, we're gonna have a form dot fields for, which creates custom fields for these tasks. So this is just built in. Every time you have a form, you can call fields for and then take fields for a child object or a child record where you have many of it. And then we once again, render this project task form. We pass in the task fields as the F inside of here. So inside of this partial, we need to reference F when we're doing stuff. Once we have that, uh, let's go ahead and let's create this partial real quick. So inside of our views projects, because that's where we said it would be, we need to right click new file, underscore project, underscore task, underscore form, dot html, dot erb. And then inside of this file, we need to grab the project task form that I have here. 
And again, this is just gonna be a div with a class of nested-form-wrapper, a data-new-record of a f.object.newRecord question mark. Uh, this is just pretty standard. You're gonna be using this every time. And then in here is where you actually create the fields you're gonna be using. So remember our task has a description. So we set that up, has the completed. So we set that up. It then has a remove button similar to the cocoon option we had the other day. You could click remove to remove one of the uh, like generated tasks uh, from the list. And we do have to pass in the f.hidden field here, which is a little bit different, uh, but this is where our parameter is. So we do that, and now if we come over here and we refresh, you'll see that nothing appears here. There's a couple reasons for that. The first is we don't have a plus button here to actually add something. So let's add the plus button, uh, and then we'll take a look at uh, like how to get stuff to appear here. So in order to determine where we want to have stuff appear, we can add in this section. So the data dash nested form target is just setting a stimulus target again. And this is the target where we will uh, inject the elements as we add them or inject the tasks in this case. So we, we say, I want a new task. It'll get injected right before here. So that gives us that. The last thing we need, like GitHub Copilot is suggesting, is this button type button with a data dash action of nested dash form, which is that stimulus controller, and then the add action. Okay, sorry. So now that we have the add task button, we can now click on add task, and that gives us the add task. And that's fine, but ideally, when you first visit this page, you might want to have a task like pre uh, blanked out for you. And the way that you can do that is you can just come over to the projects controller, scroll up to the new section, just like we did the other day. We can do at project.tasks.build, and that will give you a blank task when you refresh. You can see here I'm refreshing, and we still have that task here. We can, of course, add more if we want to, uh, but in this case, we just have one. So we'll say test. Oops, let's not do that with caps lock on. We'll say test case, and then we'll do a description of I did the thing. We'll click completed. We'll add another task, one, two, three. We'll leave it uncompleted and then we'll click create task. So now we have to actually show these. Let's come over here into our task or our project uh, partial here inside of here. Uh, in the, not in the project task, we have to come into here. Inside of this, we just want to display these somehow. So we'll just do whatever GitHub Copilot suggests here. We have a list of tasks from the project.task.each. We have a description, we have a completed uh, and let's actually do a, uh, I don't know, like a, a link to see more and then just go to the uh, task path, I guess, right? Save it like that. Come over here and refresh the page. So we have the, I did the thing with the check mark, if it's true, because it used a ternary here and some like emojis. And then we have a one, two, three, where completed is false. So it's this weird X. We can click on the link that takes us to the actual task, which shows us the project it's related to. That's cool. If we click edit, we can of course remove one of these, click update, and now we only have one. So that's all working as expected. Again, the trade-off here is there's a little bit extra of like, you know, setup, uh, which is why I usually prefer to do the things in like the, the weird speed runs I do where I just use like cocoon uh, because these, you know, these five lines are just uh, a little bit too much for my, my tiny peanut brain to handle uh, or I guess my attention span. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it is nice to just have the logic in front of you. Uh, and of course, you can always just open up this nested form uh, to see how it's actually working if you wanted to, because this is a uh, open source project, I believe. Speaking of which, if you'd like to sponsor the stimulus components, there is a sponsor GitHub page. I'll have a link to this in the video description so that you can sponsor the page. I highly recommend doing it uh, because of course we only get these tools thanks to the funding uh, that people are generous enough to provide. Yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you found this interesting. There's plenty of other uh, stuff on the stimulus components page. I'll probably be covering some more of it over the coming days. Just thought this would be a interesting one to take a look at. But yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully this is helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next video.